everybody, my name is Madison and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today is debatably one of like the best days on booktube and that is the best books I read of the year and to this year is 2023. So I don't have 23 of the best books I read in 2023 like some of the cooler booktubers do because I didn't read enough books to have 23 fantastic books, but I do have my top five, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm actually really excited to talk about this video just because I don't really post, like, monthly wrap-ups anymore to talk about the books that I absolutely adore or despise, and so this is my excuse to just have, like, 20 minutes dedicated to the things that I loved this year, and I got five of them to talk about, so let's get started. Alrighty, in the number fifth spot, you have The Ice Pick Surgeon by Sam Keen. This was so good. Now, I only gave this four stars because it is a collection of like 30 to 50 pages um, like short stories, they're short stories, but they're non-fiction short stories about scientists who have used science as an excuse to do illegal crimes, and it is so fantastic. And I truly wish that I could give this five stars, because since reading this and finishing this in January, and it's going to be part of a video that I'm hopefully going to put out in 2024, so you'll see my opinions then and there, but since finishing this, like, in January, I have not stopped thinking about it. It is just, like, so good, and the science details are just absolutely, like, disgusting in some of the short stories. And, yeah, ever since I finished it, I have not stopped thinking about it. Specifically, the STD chapter that was insane, and I still bring this up to, mind you, random people. I still bring up this to so many people. It is insane. But the reason it doesn't have five stars is because some of the short stories, like a lot of short story collections, just didn't do it for me. In fact, like the first two did not really pique my interest, and I don't know. I just don't think you could top the STD chapter, and so if you like, are just interested in e illegal activities and you kind of want to hear something about like the dark side of science that we all know exists, but they like to make us think that we're conspiracy theorists for thinking it exists, pick this up. It is so fantastic, and I promise you, I ha tell so many people about the STD chapter. Like, it was so insane. It still haunts me to this day. Like, I was visibly, I was, like, I was on the edge of throwing up while reading that chapter, but I just, oh, I love it. And that has to be, like, that's the best chapter of this book, and that is why this book is just, like, on this list, because... Like, Sam Keen has a skill, and I really want to read some of his other books. They just, they're not like this. His other books are not like this. And I'm excited to see what he puts out in the future, because I think I'm going to pick it up. And I kind of want a copy of this book, because I love it so stinking much. And that's kind of surprising. <laughs> Next on the list, you have As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the third and final book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, and I think this book was just really good. I do love the first one as well. I gave the first and the third one five stars, and then I gave the third, I gave the second one three stars. We don't talk about her. She's like the, she is the middle child, and we don't talk about her, but as good as dead, just had a plot, it has a plot twist in it that you don't see coming, and it is totally worth reading the entire series, pushing through book two to get to, because it was so well done. And I have definitely seen people read, like, Five Survive. I read that book this year. It was terrible. And people have definitely coined that, like, Holly Jackson wants that surprise plot twist at the end. She kind of likes writing and that type of, like, character arc. She likes having that surprise. And I do agree. I think that she realized how addictive and successful that kind of, like, jaw-dropping moment is when you are 
writing a book and when you get to see your when you get to see the readers reactions to that surprise twist I imagine that's quite addictive and while it did not work in five survive because that book in and of itself sucked I think it really worked so good in as good as dead and like having read the book and understanding why the cover is duct tape perfect it is perfect perfect you guys and I love this series I recommend it to so many like so many people if you want to get into mystery this is I have to say like the perfect starter mystery this one or Finley Donovan depending on what route you want to go you want absolutely ridiculous or really serious then yeah but this was really good so A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is about Pip who is deciding to do her senior project on a murder that took place in her town and everybody believes the murder was done by Ravi who is the brother of the guy who killed the girl. I cannot remember their names. I'm so sorry. So she decides that she is like, no, this seems a little bit too perfect of a crime. And so I'm going to spend the final of my senior year unraveling this murder. And she starts to get threats from somebody who kind of seems like the actual killer, which is a little weird since the killer committed suicide. Um, so yeah, It is such a good series and I really like this book which is why I will give Holly Jackson's like newer release like something about the reappearance of somebody like that because of how much I like this book and the fact that it's on my list of best books of 2023 like that is why I will give her a couple more tries before I before I'm done with her but this was really good highly recommend alrighty so we flew well we haven't flown yet but we're flying with some dragons with number three because on my third place you have fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros and listen Iron Flame is a big disappointment and I feel like It is reflecting poorly on fourth wing but I do remember reading listening to the audiobook in three days because I forgot about it and I I couldn't renew it and I had the audiobook checked out before the book blew up and so when I wanted to renew it it had blown up and I was like dang it now I have to finish it and so I was like getting up super early to like listen to the audiobooks I didn't have a physical copy and my library didn't yet either and it was just really good it takes you back it takes you back to the older like the older fan YA fantasy but it's older it's older adult fantasy it's not adult fantasy at all it is poorly written fantasy and I hate the main character's name I hate the name Violet I am very very adamant about this but I do not like the name Violet I just don't like the syllables as they leave my mouth I don't think they sound very good but I will say that I really enjoyed this book and I just I know like right now like it was really popular to love on the book and now it's like really popular to hate on the book because people don't like Rebecca Yaros anymore but I like Rebecca Yaros she lives in Colorado so do I she adopted her like sixth child lover she like don't she has like her own like adoption like, she is just such she is such a sweet little Coloradian and I want to support her love her books and I loved this one which was the first one I read I'm reading Iron Flame I don't really love it as much as I love this one but as badly written as this is the story is just it has everything that makes a fantasy book good and that is why so many people love it just because it's such a fun wild ride and I think I mean I could love it so much more if her name wasn't Violet but at least the cute like pet name that the love interest has for Violet is is cute violence is a very cute nickname just don't like Violet um which is sad but fourth wing follows Violet Sorengale as she is unwillingly thrust into the quadrant of dragon riders and these dragon riders are the soldiers the military the air force of her town her city navarre i think it's what it's called i think it's called navarre 
And so she wanted to be a scribe writer, but her mom's like, nah, -uh, baby, you gotta go into the writer's quad quadrant. And so she's thrust into there. And people are trying to kill her. She like breaks easily. Um, and of course, you have to have the angsty, evil enemies to lovers, but the enemies is not, <laughs> they're not really enemies, you guys. It's not, it's not enemies to lovers. It's a, I wish I was enemies to lovers, but it's not, okay? I don't think I've ever read an enemies to lovers, um, and this does not qualify as my first one. But yeah, it is not very well written, but it is so much fun and so wild, and I mean, you just have, you like, I don't, you just, if you go into it expecting to have a blast, you'll love it. And if you like Sarah J. Mass, you'll like it, except it actually has plot, you guys. It has plot. Oh my goodness. At least the first one does. The second one's kind of a little slow. But uh, if you like Sarah J. Mass, you'll like it, okay? I promise. It is like Sarah J. Mass. It's for Sarah J. Mass fans. I know, because I used to be a Sarah J. Mass fan. Um, and I'm Moving on, we have another nonfiction, you guys. Another nonfiction. We have Like a River by Granger Smith. This is a five star read from me. I actually want to buy a copy of this book as well and own it because this was such a good story and it is so sad. Um, it is Granger Smith's like biography about how he found God after his son, River drowned to death and it is such a heavy read it is so heavy it deals with dark top dark topics because a three-year-old dies and granger himself nearly like kmh you know and um it is so dark but i knew when I started bawling my eyes out on page four that it was going to be a five-star read. And after reading it for four hours and finishing it, getting to that five-star, I mean, I knew. I knew. I finished it in four hours. It's only two, it's 200 pages exactly, so it's not a very big book. But despite having a small weight, it leaves such a big impact. And it is so beautiful. And it's one book. It's one of the things that helped me re like get close to God again. And I really I appreciate it for doing that. It was not the thing that was not the final thing that pushed me that that gave me that final push, but it did really help me get closer to God and just start wanting that Christian lifestyle again um and I want to make a whole video about that topic in and of itself but this was such a good book and if you are struggling with grief not even of a child but of some like a friend or a family member I definitely recommend picking this book up even if you're not Christian I just think listening or I guess listening possibly because I think he does the audiobook but reading Granger Smith's story is really really beautiful and now he is he's giving up a successful career as a singer to be a pastor and I think that is just yeah I'll miss his music because He's a pretty good singer, but I would also love to see him preach one day because I think that'd be really cool. So this is in number two. This is in number two. And in first place of the year, we have The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. Oh my goodness, y'all. This book is so good. I love this book. Now, upon originally finishing this book, I gave it four and a half stars because it didn't feel like a five star. But I have since gone back and made it a five star because like the Ice Pick Surgeon, I have not stopped thinking about this book since the day I finished it. Oh my goodness, it is so freaking delicious. It is so good. It is so delicious. It is like, it is so 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I love this book so much. And it could have got Goodreads Choice Awards, and I wish it did win. I voted for it. I voted for it on the opening round. It didn't win. But I want you to know, Mark, I voted for it. Because this is, this is fantastic. This is some good, some good food. And it, it fueled my soul. It's still fueling my soul. I can't wait for the sequel. I can't. I'm so excited. I... Don't even know how to explain my love towards this book. So, like, I just, I just love it so much. But basically, I just, okay. So it follows a character named Lavira, and it follows her through several years of her life. But she is part of a desert town, and within the first couple of chapters, her entire town is murdered by a saber, who, which is like this weird beast, doesn't speak the language, likes to eat humans type of person. And they are taken, all the children are taken by the sabers for who knows what reason. And on the way of wherever the sabers are taking them, the guardsmen of the city that is within a walled city finds them, kills the saber, and brings them to safety within the walled city. Now, this is the first, like, four chapters of the book, so it's not really spoilery, but I had no idea what I was, like, what to expect going into this book, and, whew, I just freaking love all the characters. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I love the characters. But, okay, anyway, so they get taken into this wall of city by my favorite, like, captain. Oh my goodness, his mouth is so freaking filthy. It's perfect. It's so perfect. And his interaction with Lavira is just, it's gold. It's gold. Within this walled city, Lavira decides that she does not want to go the route of most dust children. And so she ends up forcefully entering into the highest ranking like royalty area to try out to go to one of their schools and because of this she actually gets accepted into the library trainee position and this is where she learns to be a librarian. The other point of view is Ivar, and he lives in the same library that Lavira works in, but it seems to be sometime in a different timeline. You don't really know when. He is locked in with his siblings in this library, and it is like Maze Runner style. Like, there are creatures like I, I picture these creatures like the Grievers in the Maze Runner. They come out, try to kill them, try to eat them, you know, blah, 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 you know, that type of thing. Like, that is what I picture. So, you have two fantastic characters, Ivar and Lavira. And, I mean, somewhere along the way, they gotta, they gotta merge, they gotta meet. I'm not gonna say when, because that's like, ah, that's like the most anticipatory part of the book. But... Okay, so you have those two characters. And just, like, the library itself is so beautiful. It is so gorgeous. Was that spit? Was that dust? What was that? Anyway, the library is gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. It is, like, 200 million miles long. It seems to be never-ending. There are secret people and birds and creatures and fire and <laughs> it is so good oh my goodness it is so good it is so good it is so good and like the twists like the re okay some of the like i huh, i don't, I don't think any, like, if you, there is a plot twist in a book that I cannot see coming, I will like it. Well, it's highly, I will like it. But when there is a book and there are plot twists that I predict, like, I predict the twist that the author is writing towards, and then we get to that twist and it proves that I was right? Ah! It makes the book. It makes the book. And this is just so good. And it happened here. And 
and I was like, because, because I didn't predict everything, but I predicted some of it, and I was like, just, oh, floored. I was floored, you guys. So, this is my favorite book of the year, and I just think, I think my entire reaction to trying to tell you guys why I love this book so much proves why it's my favorite book. It was just so good. It was so good. I really wish I had gotten like the pretty like gold special edition of this book but of course that came in a book box and who didn't have the book box when that book came out? I didn't because I didn't know I wanted that book okay so I'm sad <laughs> but I really love this book and I would totally recommend it. I mean if you are a fantasy lover I think you're going to like it. And I've already started pushing this book in my library to anybody who would listen. It is, like, so popular at my library. And, yeah. I just loved it. I loved it so much. I was, like, crying at the end. And, like, the way it ended, I'm like, there's still no more. There's still no more. What? How? I just... Mind blown. Mind blown. Anyway... That's my list. That's my top five of 2023. I hope you guys liked it. My battery's about to die. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Talk to Mickey, Fetita. Au revoir. Hey, do. Adios. Goodbye. Salu. I gotta go. My battery's about to die. Tell me your top five or tell me your top one in the description box or in the comments. Have you read any of these? And if you haven't, you should. Bye-bye.